you know, it, we, we want to talk money wise. Um, I definitely did better financially in 2020 than I did in 21, but it's not saying that I didn't do well. I mean, I, I still did well. Still, whenever I set off to do this, I had a, you know, I planned everything out, did my research, and okay, if I hit this dollar amount by this year, and this dollar amount by this year, you know, this is this is how I could see things progressing. I'm well beyond that. I mean, it's just, and I hit that last year. I mean, my first year I did well, um, even though it was not a complete full year. My first full year of adjusting, fantastic, you know, and then this year has been fantastic as well. And a part of that goes back to, how do you get all this work, James? Market yourself, yeah. you know, just call people, talk to people, go to conventions like NACA, um, any of these that you can go to, meet people, be known, you know, yeah. try just, you know, if, if they don't know who you are, you have less of a chance of getting called, you know. Um, I say be a pest. You know, somebody says, James, how do you get work? I'm a pest. <laughs> the pest <laughs> I don't, method. I don't go away. This is Adjuster TV. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Paysetter Claim Service. Learn more at adjustertv.com slash paysetter. e &O provider Kaplik. Download the free insurance for adjusters guide at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And by Crawford Catastrophe Services. Join Adjuster TV at the 2022 Crawford & Company CAT Conference the first week of March 2022 in Orlando. There are literally dozens of training classes, including wildfire, flood, and several carrier certifications, among others. Register for the conference right now for early bird pricing. Get full details at crawco.com slash cat and scroll down to the conference link. The full link is in the description where you're watching or listening to this program. Again, Adjuster TV will be attending this conference, so when you sign up, let them know we sent you. Hague Education, US Tape, and Eberl Claim Service. Apply now at eberls.com and let them know that Adjuster TV sent you. Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Hit the bell notification so that you never miss a video. I am here right now in studio with our boy, James Mathis. Hello, Matt. How How's are you, sir? Good, good. How's it going, man? You know, I'm just chubby and cheerful as always. Right on, right you on. Know, I was fat and happy, but I lost some weight. Now I'm just chubby and cheerful. Gotcha. Yeah. Good so, times. So, uh, what have you been up to? Oh man, I mean, it's been uh, it's been busy. I feel like I'm busier now since I've sort of pretty much retired from doing claims and doing Adjuster TV full time. I feel like I'm busier now than I ever was with claims. This is like four full time jobs running this thing. So. Uh -huh. But you're busy. I'm busy. But you're busy. I'm busy. Yeah, busy. yeah. Well, you know, and it's it's uh, it's working. So good deal. But so. uh, let's talk a little bit about what you've been up to, Mr. James. Since you know, let's let's go back in the beginning. And <clears throat> how far in the beginning do we want to go back? Well, just the beginning of like your you decided to get into claims. So you know, I got into so if we're gonna go that far back, so I made the decision to get in. Um, of course, we know that I consumed a lot of a. Uh, Adjust your TV, trying to figure things out. Of you course, and I had an opportunity to meet in Dallas, and and uh, you steered me in the right direction. And then shortly after that, I uh, took a plunge off a roof and uh, messed up my knee and hip. And no bueno. Had my surgery on my knee, and during that process, you had introduced me to uh, um, Chris Stanley and got to doing some doing auto. Yeah, and and you were like, before that, you were like an auto. You worked at a dealership. I'd worked at a dealership. Um, so you a, a, for a little while, and I was uh, doing fleets like a fleet service manager, basically doing all the commercial accounts. Um, so I mean, I've been around cars all my life. Been around cars. Been around construction. You know, a little bit of everything. Been around insurance, and uh, so going into adjusting was just kind of a natural for me because it took everything I knew, put it all in one. You know, and plus I got to help people, and that was. That was the, my big motivation. So, um, so then of course I, you know, in Dallas Fort Worth is where I live, and it's a very difficult place to to get started um, in this business because it's just saturated with adjusters, it's like the mecca of adjusting. Everybody, all roads lead to Dallas Fort Worth, somewhere or another. If you're an adjuster, um, lots of training companies there, and lots of people live there, and it's just just hard to get work. So I made some phone calls to some companies and they all said well you know i said hey look what you, you've got to have some work somewhere where can i get work at and 
few companies said, if you can go to West Texas, middle of Odessa, we can get you work. So I packed packed up the RV, went out there, worked for a few months. And that was doing auto? That was doing auto, uh, doing auto and, and um, heavy equipment, semi-trucks, trailers, stuff like that. Worked out there for a few months and came back to Texas. What year was this? That was 19. Okay. That was 2019. Um, the journey to become an adjuster started in 18, but 2019 was the year that I made the yeah. leap. Um, so then I got back, you know, was getting work, things were going pretty good, and you know, it's staying pretty busy, and and um, then the next season comes along, you know, we get through the winter, and you know, I, I start working, went to work for a, a uh, one of our sponsors at Adjuster T went to work for uh, went to work for the best, uh-huh. and uh, they were starting up their automotive division at that time, and got a job working for them. And it, we were, I think we were one maybe two weeks into it, COVID hits, you know, and they just everything comes to a halt. You know, I get laid off. It's, it's temporary. We figure things out. Well, you know me, I can't sit around and wait. And uh, and I love. And by the way, it's not anything bad about Best. They did a great job. I'm still friends with them. Still do work with them. My son works for them full time. Um, yeah. You know, he's on staff there. Uh, it just circumstances, you know, that happen. And so I had an opportunity to, you know, hell season hits, which was fan. COVID was probably the best thing for my career because all the companies were not sending out their staff adjusters. They were keeping everybody in. Yeah. So they just took the the fil- the independents who are expendable you know they're not on the payroll they don't have to worry about paying them if they get sick oh, i was busy i was just flat busy uh hooked up with a national pdr company that um which so a lot of when a lot of the P- these national pdr companies um they have contracts directly with the the carriers where they go out they scope the vehicle they write the estimates they you know they're they're part of the claims process right and part of that process they can also capture that business and repair the vehicles well that's not my concern my job was just to go out scope the vehicles write this based on guidelines and turn them in you know and so man i was busy and i went to i mean i like i forgot what i go on nine deployments that year um on between auto and and um and property finished up the year uh, my next the last deployment i went on was of course hurricane laura um that was that was a blast you know going out there and learned a lot a lot of frustrations which we'll talk about at some point um came back from that went to virginia for a special project for a week got home from that and just uh, sat around the house for the next few months being a trophy husband <laughs> and uh Good looks and personality is all it takes to survive in this world. Right, right. And so, so, uh, so quick question for you. Right. Um, and you don't have to name like who they are, right. but have, have, did you work for more than one firm through the I worked for the multiple, period? multiple companies. And like consecutively at the same time? So there were some times where, like I was on one deployment um, where I was working a drive during the day. And then at night, on the evenings, I was out running some field claims for another company. Uh, picking those up, running, you know, maybe three or four before it got dark. And then I was also pulling out of a queue and desk riding out of a queue all at the same time. And, uh, that was the, that was the best month I've ever had in this business. It was a fantastic month. And I did that a couple months in a row. Um, but yeah, some of those are multiple times. And then whenever I was at home and I was running dailies, I was running, of course, for multiple companies. Uh, doing that right but if i was but like whenever i deployed for uh, hurricane laura there was only one company working for them i didn't do multiple companies right. just one cup comp- one ia firm one carrier that's it sure yes yeah, a cat so um so anyway like i said got to the end of 2020 you know um had a great year man it was a fantastic year like i said sat around until the next year got a call in january from uh the national PDR company that I had worked for, and they said, hey, we want to put you on a retainer. We're going to give you a monthly guarantee, plus we'll pay you per claim, um, and we'll keep you busy. And I thought it sounded like a pretty good deal. Well, it ends up that I was the only person covering Dallas-Fort Worth. Large territory, lots of work. I mean, lots of driving, and it just was not 
working out for me. It just was not satisfying uh, financially or professionally. Uh, lots of stress involved. Uh, at one point, they had me uh, with one of their partner carriers. I was actually working in a body shop processing the supplements at, you know, between the body shop and the carrier. And I was, you know, it was that, and that was just a mess in itself. And um, frustrated with that, just saying, this is not going to work. Just the money wasn't there. Uh, frustrated with everything. Get a call from a, a PDR shop that I had done work with. And um, people seemed pretty cool, seemed pretty nice. Um, guy said he was looking for somebody to come in and help out with customer service and claims process. Since I knew the process, help them get a little bit better, a little bit better uh, traction with the insurance carriers. And uh, I told you this story. First day there, walk in, managers walking me around, showing me everything, lights up a joint and says, "Here you go." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm good. And so, and that was pretty much the culture of that place. Oh, wow. Uh, so I lasted all the two weeks. Is it yeah. is it legal in Texas? No, no. And, and these people, and most of the people there are from Colorado. Right. So, so anyway, that lasted two weeks. I just finally said, you know, this is not going to work out. Um, no matter how I try to candy coat it, it's just not a good, not a good environment. Right. Um, that's the reason why they were having problems. You know, because everybody was high all the time. I mean, hey, if you want to do it, that's up to you, man. But during business hours, you got to put a draw line somewhere. Seriously. So, uh, it's like cracking open a beer at yeah. you know, 8 o'clock in the morning. So uh, I thought, you know what? I'm done. You know, with this, I'm, I I went in. I just told him it's not going to work out. I called my wife said, you know, yeah, you're right. Today's the day I'm walking out of here. And uh, I went in and talked to the, the owner of the place. And I'm walking to my car. And as I'm walking to my car, I get a text message going, we're looking for somebody to go to New Mexico. Ah, oh, Nuevo Mexico. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, I'll do That's that. That's my Spanish for you. So, it's not very good. It's anyway. Correct. We, uh, Correcto. Want to work from home? I thought that might get your attention. I'll cut to the chase here and tell you that the IA firm Paysetter Claim Service frequently has work from home opportunities for the field and also for desk work, which let's be honest, really just means work at home in your PJs. Still wanna work in the field though? Paysetter's Evo platform is fully integrated with Hover. It is the best of the app-based claims handling systems out there right now. Technology is moving faster than ever and Paysetter is right there at the cutting edge. We put together a free guide to maximizing your productivity while working at home in your pajamas, along with a link to apply to this dynamic firm. And you can find both at adjustertv.com slash pace setter. So I, they called me, I got this text message. I responded back to it. They called me up and I hightailed it to New Mexico. And that was in July. And, um, and, and so that was, that was a really interesting thing because I was out there primarily in the beginning, writing for one carrier. And, and these started, are daily property These claims. are daily property claims, but they just had so, they had, it was monsoon season and they had gotten so much work, you know, they, they just needed help. Yeah. And so, um, with all the daily claims, I went out there and I stayed in New Mexico from July until November, you know. And so, like a deployment. Kinda. Like a deployment. And um, so, by the time... Next thing you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working multiple IA firms, multiple carriers. Some carriers I'm working multiple. I mean, some IA firms I'm working multiple carriers, you know, um, just busting out dailies, you know, and I'm covering pretty much all of New Mexico. I'm covering everything from Albuquerque out to Gallup to, I mean, not even got out to Clovis one time, which is basically Lubbock. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Lubbock's a lot closer to Clovis. Uh, going up to Red River and Angel Fire and Taos and you know, it, it, guys, if you've never been to New Mexico, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, it's it's uh, they call it the land of enchantment for a reason. The, the diversity of the um, landscape there is incredible, and you can be driving through the mountains and come around a curve, and you're looking at desert mountains, and you go around another curve, you're back in alpine mountains, and then you drive maybe 15 miles, and you're out in rolling desert and mesas everywhere it's just incredibly beautiful well the other thing was you know, i got there in july and i was there in july august september which are in texas those are traditionally your your hot months in texas your hottest months that's also part of the monsoon season for the desert southwest, southwest yeah. 
I think we hit 100 degrees one or two days that whole time I was there. And as long as the temperature was, you know, once you get up like 96, 97 and above, <laughs> hot is hot. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. It's just hot. But, you know, 90, 95 degrees, I'm not even breaking a sweat. I'm working all day. It feels great to me. People out there going, dude, it's so hot and humid. I'm like, it's Man, 31% I humidity. I was like, going, <laughs> I need to put on a sweater. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, I had a blast. I mean, just made friends out there. Um, you know, started playing golf again. Hadn't played golf in 14 years. You know, these guys I met taught me into playing golf. I've got a full set of golf clubs now, everything. Um, had a, had fun, you know. And uh, as that was wrapping up, it was getting it was getting pretty slow. And I was making the decision to go home for Thanksgiving. And it's kind of wrapping things up a little bit. And I get a call asking me to go up to the Pacific Northwest, go up to Washington State. And, of course, I don't want to go up there, you know. <laughs> and... But you know me, I have a hard time saying no because my philosophy is the more you say yes, the more opportunities you get to say yes, and the more often you say no, the less opportunities you get to say yes. Yeah. So I end up in uh, Washington State. Um, that is one of those things I'll definitely put down as another experience in my career, okay? And it'll also go down one of those things that I just don't want to do again. Uh, I can understand why they have staffing issues up there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yes. yeah. And the thing is, it's beautiful. Washington is a beautiful state. If the sun ever comes out. Yeah. I was you, there, should, you should go up there in the summertime. It's, I was there 17 days. I saw the, saw the sun three times. Yeah. Three times. It's dreary. And that's dismal. it. And so uh, I was after like my second week there. Oh, I was, I was into my, well into my second week, almost at the end of it. It was, I was like, I got to go. <laughs> and so, and, and that again, I was running dailies, you know, and, and I wasn't, it wasn't a typical uh, cat deployment. It was running dailies. Yeah. And which that was something else that I learned this year, the different, um, the different types of claims and deployments and, and, and how to get work um, kind of fell into a, a, a good rhythm and a, with a good company that, that I've got a great relationship now that, you know, it seems like we're going to continue working together for a while. So it's, uh, but uh, that's kind of what I did for the year. I mean, it's, right it's I can't complain about it at all. Um, you know, it, we want to talk money wise. Um, I definitely did better financially in 2020 than I did in 21. But it's not saying that I didn't do well. I mean, I, I still did well. Still, whenever I set off to do this, I had a and I planned everything out, did my research, going, okay, if I hit this dollar amount by this year, this dollar amount by this year, you know, this is this is how I could see things progressing. I'm well beyond that. I mean, it's just, and I hit that last year. I mean, my first year I did well, um, even though it was not a complete full year. My first full year of adjusting, fantastic, you know, and then this year has been fantastic as well. And yeah. I've been completely blessed, you know, the relationships I've made, the people I've met. And a part of that goes back to how do you get all this work, James? Market yourself. Yeah. You know, just call people, talk to people, go to conventions like NACA, um, any of these that you can go to, meet people, be known, you know, yeah. try just, you know, if if they don't know who you are, you have less of a chance of getting called, you know. Um, I say be a pest. You know, somebody says, James, how do you get work? I'm a pest. <laughs> the pest I method. Don't, I don't go away, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, kind of like this COVID thing. I'm just not going away. Yeah. You're here know? to stay, man. Kind of like Gotta wear a mask around James, otherwise you'll, you know, yeah. you'll so, get work. Uh, you know, of course, we're going to start off at NACA this year, yeah. which is... End of the month. The way we, just, just a couple of weeks. Just a couple of weeks away. This is like we always do every year. We started off at NACA. Um, going to go there and, and uh, shake hands and... What would I say uh, last year? I'm going to shake babies and shake. Yeah. <laughs> Go to shake babies and kiss hands. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> kiss hands and shake babies. That's what we're doing. Uh, Mrs. Me is going this year. Nice. Dawn's going to, Dawn's going. And that's another thing is Dawn got her, uh, my wife now has her um, adjuster's license. Um, she's, uh, she's taken, she's taken Chris's, you know, course. Right. And she's gotten that certification to kind of start and she's going to be able to do that. And, um, so you guys plan on working as a team or we're gonna work or? as a team primarily, you know, it's, it's, uh, um, we, we don't, the way we're kind of looking at it, we know that some companies, they like to deploy husband, wife teams, mm -hmm. uh, cause they can 
they know that you can get more production done. They don't necess- Some companies say, no, we just hire you two individually. She has her claims, you have yours. Um, you know, pick and choose your companies and how you want to work it. Uh, primarily for us, we're just going to work as a team, just work the same set of claims, which we can get more turned in, get more production done, um, splitting the duties, you know, of each claim, how it's going to work out. We've already got that, you know, we've already, we already have our, our process, you know, and our flow chart for that. Okay. You know, at least that's why we plan on it. But if it actually works that way, we'll, we'll find out. But uh, that's what, so we're, we're doing that. We've got, uh, um, I'll be back in Texas working this year for the most part and then taking deployments whenever, whenever I can. But i um, really looking forward to NACA because that's, uh, that's just a fun thing to do every year. Yeah, it's super fun. And, uh, you know, we get the question all the time, right? People will say, well, you know, why, if I could only, she don't, could only go to one conference, which one would it be? NACA. You know, NACA for sure, you know, and just to kind of briefly talk about conferences a little bit. For the most part, they're like IA firms will have like conferences where they'll offer some CE and they're like meet and greet things. Um, some I've, I've been to several, and, and some firms will have like, well, I think everyone I've been to that's run by a firm will have like a an awards ceremony, like the adjuster who's got the high, maintained the highest right. customer service score gets a, you know, gift certificate to. TJ Maxx or something or, or a drone. You know, I've seen they, they drone. Do all kinds of gifts and stuff. And they, they do some of that stuff at the NACA convention. Um, but the difference is and why it's kind of like the signature convention and the one that I think everybody should consider going to primarily, you know, also because it's right at the beginning of the year when pretty much nothing's going, nothing's on, going on right right now. So, I mean, the holiday, we just got to the holidays and the main reason is because all those firms and a lot of them that have their own conferences they're all going to be at the the NACA convention, right? So they're going to have, you know, all the booths are sold out. They're full of uh, uh, IA firms. Um, there's Hague Engineering is going to be there. There's, um, I think Stevens Engineering might be there. Now I'm have to look at the list, but the, a whole bunch of different companies, but mostly IA firms. And the IA firms are interview for for you know at least two to you know, and probably I'm not sure exactly what the schedule is this year, but Normally, it's three days worth of interviews, and then one day is like the big expo. Um, but they may, they, I, I heard that they may have changed that up a little bit. But either way, it's, you know, you can take one of the tracks. There's seven tracks. But there's like a flood track and a property track and a, this, you know, all different kinds of tracks, um, which I recommend to do. But if it looks like your schedule every day for those first three days is filled up with CE and like taking these track things, I would say to skip out on some of those. Because the, the real, I mean, you can get CE for a hundred bucks right. from in your pajamas off at Adjuster Pro. Um, I would say network, right? And interview, take a, take a stack of resumes with you, business cards, whatever, and go meet with as many of those firms as you possibly can. All of them, if, if you can. And, you know, um, and I think this is something really, really important to talk about. And that is, is that not only should you be network, networking with, you know, HR people and team managers and the kind of the IA firm people that are going to be there, but also with other adjusters. Other adjusters, yep. Yeah, because, you know, my main reason for that is that a lot of the time when you hear about a deployment, it's somebody texting you saying, hey, I, you know, such and such IA firm just called me to go to St. Louis. Um, they asked if I knew anybody else. And so, I, you know, I'm, I'm letting you know if, you, if you're interested in going to St. Louis for a hailstorm, call them. Right, yep. that happens all the time half the time you know if i'm not if, if i didn't get called directly already i'm getting a text message or a call from one of and that's guys. happened to me on a couple of occasions yeah. like you know 2020 i had one where this one where i ended up in iowa you know i called a company up i was in minnesota and that minnesota deployment wasn't going so great so i you know self-released out of that and and um so i'm gonna head to iowa and there's, oh, yeah, we can use you. By the way, you know anybody else? You know, I called a yeah. guy up that was in Texas, and I said, how fast can you get here? And, uh, yeah. and, they, and they brought him up there, and, and, uh, and that's, that's happened to And then, matter of fact, how I, how I got the deployment or how I ended up going to New Mexico was because of connection that I had made at NACA. It was because I never worked with this company before, never, never done anything. They, uh, they worked for a different company. Okay, and then now they're they're with a 
different company now than they were before and and that's how I got it the second she saw my name come across she like skipped over all the other ones came straight to me because we we'd met yeah. yeah so that's uh networking is where it's at man it's huge it's so huge <clears throat> and you know I, the other thing is I mean when especially on a big deployment you get in the hotel room and you know, you may see people that you knew that you yeah. met at the conference that you met at previous storms and stuff. And I think well, there was, yeah, I had one, um, when I was working hurricane Laura, there was a guy I met down there and super nice guy. He's from Fort worth, which is of course where I born and raised. And he had a dog, he had a basset hound and uh basset hounds are awesome. You know, I'm a dog guy. I love dogs, you yeah. know, but he had a basset hound named Crawford and, uh, and we were working for Renfro, which I thought was funny, <laughs> not Crawford. Are you interested in more than just punching a clock and paying the bills? Wouldn't you rather be on the A-team surrounded by the best of the best in the industry? Then you need to check out Eberl Claim Service. For well over 30 years, Eberl's philosophy of treating adjusters as they wish to be treated has allowed them to establish a vast network of the most professional, educated, and dedicated adjusters in the industry. So at Eberl, you're in good company. If you're a motivated and compassionate adjuster slash claims professional, Eberl wants you to represent their organization. Go to jobs.eberls.com right now and get started with Eberl Claims Service. But anyway, um, bear the dog, you know? And so I am in, I'm in New Mexico and I have a dog. I have a road dog and I'm at a dog park. I'm going to see this. See this basset hound? I'm like, man, that basset hound looks just like Crawford. I didn't pay attention to the people because I'm taking out all the dogs. You know, right. I care less about people. And sitting there for a little bit, and all of a sudden I hear this guy go, Crawford, come here. And I turned around and looked over, and sure enough, man, it was the guy that I had met in Louisiana. And I turned around and looked at him, and he looked at me. I was like, hey, you know, what's <laughs> going on? So here it was. I'm, it's beer 30. Yeah. So we, uh, Somewhere. you know, he's out there working for Pilot, you know. And, um, and I'm out there working for a different company and, and, uh, and, you know, we made that connection again and chatted and helped each other out some. And, and so it was a pretty cool deal, you know? And so now, you know, he had a resource. I'd been out there for, at that point, I'd already been out there for about two and a half months, you know, and he was only been there for a short time and now he's got a resource, you know, and I got somebody that I could, you know, hang out with on yeah. occasion and, and do stuff. And so it's pretty cool deal. And again, man, dogs, yes. you know? the dog is what did it you know and uh and i've also run into um you know people well, so whenever i was heading for seattle um saw a guy in a, in a chevy tahoe with a with a uh, ladder on the top of it i might like going surely he's probably going the same direction i'm going and sure and we ran into each other the truck stopped started chatting with each other and sure enough that's where he was headed to and you know working with the same company heading up that way and got his name and we've a couple of times we talked about he had a claim he was dealing with. And, you know, that's the other thing is when you go to different parts of the country, you deal with different types of construction, you yeah, know, different sure. ways that they do their roofs, different way that they do their soffits, different way that, you know, they have crawl spaces versus slab foundations, all these different things that they do that are different. And a lot of, you know, if you've never seen it before, or been exposed to it, you're sitting there looking at stuff going, okay, so how do I do this? How yeah. am I going to do this repair? And if you've got somebody that you can lean on and talk to, always good. And so he and I talked about several claims together and, and, uh, and worked them out together. So that's uh, very important about networking with other, yeah. other people. Yeah. And that, you know, that conference is, you got to go. I love it. I mean, even if even if you are, have been an, an adjuster for a long time, I think it's still worth going because there are companies there that won't hire anybody with less than ten years of experience. Mm -hmm. Preventure they do large loss commercial, right? Right. And if if all a guy does is cat property, which is kind of what I did, you, you get kind of pigeonholed into that, and it sort of stagnates growth, right? Um, so if if you're Certain companies are like really, really good at certain things, like different IA firms, right? Um, Preventure, you know, for as an example, I mean, they're not going to take like a bunch of residential, like little piddly wind claims there, right. you know, necessarily, um, unless they absolutely have to. But they are going to, you know, if you want to get large losses, big fee bills, um, you know, that kind of thing that sort of takes your, your career to the next level, 
you know, those firm those firms are at that convention. Mm-hmm. CCMS and Associates is another one. I mean, those guys right. they do all kinds of different stuff. You know, appraisal and like uh, dispute resolution stuff, which you got to have some experience, I think, to do. Um, or it help it really helps have experience and that they'll train. But there are a lot of opportunities out there for adjusters besides just cat property, right? And you know, I think these daily deployments. If you if you were just getting started, like back in the you know back in the beginning, um, do you think that you would be able to that you would be able to get a daily deployment like you like you just got off of, or do you need to do like some cat stuff first? So that's actually different scenarios dictate that you know part of it is what part of the country you're in where are you at um if you're in an area that's extremely underserved by by adjusters uh you have a higher chance of picking up daily work yeah okay eastern washington yeah or western or western yeah either one uh montana you know um places like that new mexico that um you know well you know out there it's that market is 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 a great market but it is very cyclical out there i mean it it's uh when it's dead it's dead but when it's hopping it's hopping yeah. you know and um but as far as getting started i think your best bet as far as getting work and and i know some of these old timers are going to grow when i say this if you can get on some of these scope only assignments or what they call task assignments um those are a great way to get your a get your foot in the door with the company and b hone your scoping skills okay you do have to sketch on these things so you're doing everything except for actually writing the estimate but that gets you in the process of you do it exactly like any other claim except for the fact that you're just not writing the estimate so you're learning a lot you're you're getting your foot in the door and then when they need help you're already there okay you're already working on it you get a good shot that way yeah. um that's how i got started that's what i was originally doing was was a virtual assistant scope only um that helped me a lot um as far as getting work and and getting exposed to different things could i have got right out of the shoot and gotten daily work i i don't know if i could have or not okay um it was through the photo you know, the scope only assignments that 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 helped me out and then you know, I didn't technic- technically do my first full um, full adjusting assignment until I went to Hurricane Laura. Um, everything else was just photo and scope. And then um, after that, you know, I mean, I did some small water loss stuff, you know, still doing auto and equipment and all that. And then, and then got the opportunity to jump into the dailies I was doing. And so that, do we want to talk about that? You know, the different types. Yeah. So, so what I learned is there's basically three different types of three different types of work you have and three different things that you can kind of concentrate on. One is being a cat adjuster, just chasing cat all the time. One is dailies, concentrating on doing daily, staying in your market and just running dailies. Or that I found out this year, there's a completely different category and that's deployed dailies. And that is whenever you go a market such as I ran into, and which we use New Mexico. Uh, monsoon season hits. There's a huge spike in claims. They got to have some people out. It's not a deployment. It's not a catastrophe. It's just a large spike in claims. They got to have warm bodies. They got to have people to go out there and do this. But those type of claims, they want some people with some experience. There's some sort of competence that can go out there and do that. I don't think you're really going to get a shot at it with with no experience but if you've got at least a little bit of experience and you've done a cat and you've shown some competence they'll give you a shot to, to go out and do those um but those are basically daily assignments those are not cat assignments you don't have a help room um, you're going out there and you're working you're going to be working very closely with your your field managers um you know rather than having everything's remote yeah. so you're pretty much on your own doing that and then of course you know like i said we had cats dailies and then cat um or deployed dailies, which is what I did in Washington. Yeah. Those were all daily claims. I think I had two that were that were actually had cat codes on them and uh, that paid a little bit more, but everything else was dailies, running yeah. dailies. So, and just, you know, so people understand, um, you know, we say deploy daily and you're like, well, it's monsoon season, they get a spike of claims. Um, 
it's not just during like weather events, right? Right. I mean, I've done several deploy daily deploy daily. Event. I didn't know that was what it was called, but right. Um, the other thing that can happen, it could happen at any time. My point is, that it could happen at literally any time if the carrier loses some people they, and they don't have anybody to cover that territory. There's deployed dailies right there, and right. you can work anywhere in the literally anywhere in the country for the for those. Um, if they do a reorganization and they decide to fire everybody, and it's all they want to use all IAs anytime, just right. the drop of a. I mean, and, and those companies do it all the time. Like you know, Liberty Mutual was doing it. You know, I. I did, I was a staff adjuster at Liberty and had to, you know, send out task assignments to IAs in the field. And then when I went back to being an IA, I was in that same, that same territory that you just got back got, just got out of. And, uh, it is a big pain in the ass territory, but they have, they have trouble keeping people up there and it's, there's a lot of drive time. You got the ferries, you got the, you know, it's, yep. the, it's just, you have to get around water. That's the whole right. thing. Everything. It, it's just every, you got to plan islands. everything, you know, and you're just like, well, you, you look on the map and it's like two miles away, but it takes you 45 miles to get there. It's right. <laughs> you know, it's it, yeah. and it. You're gonna sit on a boat. You know, you're kind of you know riding ferries, man. And yep. just, that was that was an experience. Yeah. Got to see a whale though. Oh really? Yeah, I, yeah. I so we, uh, actually, I, there's people standing up on the deck on the front of the ferry, and I'm like, oh, what's going on up there? And I stepped out, and people had their cameras, and all of a sudden, everybody goes, I'm like looking off to the right, and people over here on the left and he goes oh and i looked over just in time to see it breach you know get go back in the water That's and, cool. and then you know st- sat there for a little bit and a few seconds later it just kind of came up and just rolled you know you saw it's you know it's fin just yeah. roll over and i was like ah it's pretty cool you yeah. know i've sat in the the cafeterias and the, you know a little booth or whatever and written up written up claims sitting on the ferry and then um and then there was one day i was um i was actually driving and i was on the highway and i looked over and there was a pod of orcas. I'm nice. Like, yeah, that's that was cool. cool. Yeah, I was like, uh, yeah. like, well, chalk that up in my, you know, things I've experienced and seen. That was a that was a pretty that, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Of all the things I got to see up there, that was probably my favorite thing to see was that pod of orcas yeah. out there. Hey, listen, take your wife and go in the summertime for like a long week. Yeah, that's gonna be the only way I go. <laughs> <laughs> I would not go back up. Don't go it up there and, and work. You know, and again, the work is good work, and it's 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 um for me, it was just. A lot of driving and no sunshine and i have to have sunshine man i realize there's there's some things in my life i can't live without my wife my dogs and sunshine i yes. just, I, just, I gotta have those i gotta have those three things so you know facing a lawsuit can be a terrifying and stressful experience jeopardizing your years of hard work and success if you don't have adequate insurance coverage as an adjuster putting yourself at great financial risk. If you make your living from handling claims as an independent adjuster, then you must get errors and emissions and general liability insurance coverage. It doesn't matter if you're a 1099 or a W-2 or you work carrier direct, protect yourself with professional liability insurance from Kaplik. To find out more and to download the insurance for adjusters free guide, head on over to cplic.net slash adjuster tv that's c-p-l-i-c dot net slash adjuster tv on the deployed dailies okay that's i don't know if that's what it's really called but that's the best thing i know and actually they send you a thing that says okay this is where you're at you're and they do consider you as deployed even when you're working dailies at home you actually have a deployment. It's it's you have documents that say that you're deployed right. and, and what you're, what you're you get getting an paid. Agreement and right. And so there's an agreement for all these. Every place I go, I get another an ag- agreement for it. But those assignments, you know, and, and getting that work, they can happen. Like I said, they can happen absolutely anywhere that there's a spike in in claims, and they may come to you and say, "Hey, yeah." You know, once you have the experience and you have an opportunity to do that, I found out that those are the hardest ones to cover. Those are the ones that they have the most difficult time to get to be able to go to because A, they're looking for somebody that's got at least enough experience and competency to do them and then B, willing to go do it. And we talked about this in in another podcast where this is a reciprocal business that when you do things, companies remember it and they repay you for it, you know? Um, I'm already getting calls and offers to do other stuff because of what I did in New Mexico and what I did in Washington, you know, um, it's the payback kind of thing. Yep, yep. And, um, 
So don't, if you look at an assignment, you go, man, I don't want to go to the desert or I don't want to go there. You know, I might be trash talking to Washington a little bit, but if you get a phone call to go to Washington, go because they have a hard time getting help up there. And if you go up there and, and just knock out claims for a few weeks and, and help them out, I guarantee you, you're going to get put on the radar. Um, yeah. Call your firms. If you're willing to go to Washington, tell them you'll go because they always need help. Yeah, and actually, you know what? That brings up, an imp- uh, I think, a really important point. Somebody had uh, said something in the Adjuster TV private Facebook group, uh, which, by the way, if you're not a member of, go to facebook.com slash groups slash Adjuster TV and uh, request to be, um, you know, to join. Um, request exclusive membership. Uh, Mr. Smith asked, um, contemplating adding more state licenses with the hopes to attract remote desk desk work viable option or a waste of money and a bunch of people chimed in but you know this this kind of goes to that kind of question and we get this question a lot right do i need to get every single license no you don't but washington state requires has a license i'm pretty sure oregon's got a license mm-hmm. um if you want to work in the northeast which is it's very similar to the northwest especially because you know they can get Ice dam, a lot of ice dam claims up there. They get a big snow, and then it, and then it rains on it. It melts, and it's free. You know, it's, it's a big mess, right? Um, same deal. And those are, you know, the the I five corridor between Portland, Oregon, and you know, pretty much the Canadian border mm-hmm. is very, very heavily populated. There's a lot of piff in that area, um, and it's a high turnover area as well, right? So the same thing with like. You know, for those of you who know, PIF is policies in force. Yes, and in the Northeast, I mean, you still got like everything from like Bangor, Maine, down to what, like New Jersey and south of there. I mean, that's it's heavily there's millions and millions, tens of millions of people that live in that area, and there's a lot of adjusters there. And every daily adjuster that I know that works in those areas does very well. But it's again, I mean, it's the same deal. It's you can do a a, a deployed daily deployment in the Northeast, right? Mm-hmm. New Hampshire, um, pick a state, right? They're all just, they're little tiny states and they're all jam-packed right. and most of them require a license. Um, so you know, every time I hear banger man, I just think of a bunch of metal heads eating lobster. <laughs> just, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. You know, and the other thing about it, I mean, it's there's there's such a good food in these places, you know, like yeah. the seafood in the Northeast and, and the Northwest. I mean, it's it's pretty phenomenal. Yeah. Um, uh, but to you know, as far as the licenses go, yes, there are a lot of remote desk opportunities. More and more and more every more. day. More and more. And more. Um, because again, the, the carriers they're they're handing off like the claim to IA firms, which are TPAs, third party administrators. administrators, which is just a like a a nerdy insurance nerd way of saying that they they have the claim from start to finish right and they can handle it however they want to right so instead of like you know they send they still do this but you go on a, like a state farm cap and there's a bunch of state farm people there and there's a bunch of you know pilot or whoever people there alacrity whatever and you go out you get to sign the claim you go out and do the, the first inspection and they just give it back to state farm and state farm takes it from there right mm-hmm. um with these TPA kind of claims, you get the, the the firm gets the claim, and then they keep it until it's closed, closed. And so they're going to have remote desk work where they're doing handling supplements. You know, weeks and months later, sending it back out for a reinspection, and and it's not until that claim is like paid and closed and closed and like totally buttoned down, closed, they give it back to the carrier. Um, so that's where a lot of this remote photo and scope stuff is coming from because they're saying, all right, well, you know. We can send James out with his phone to take pictures and draw a diagram on this roof, and then we'll have you know somebody sitting in their in their apartment or in a call center. You know, there's, there's some companies that still have call centers going. Um, Paysetter was telling me that up until COVID hit, they were they were going to build out a bunch of call centers to do a lot of this their Evo mm-hmm. program stuff. But COVID hit, and they're like, you know what? I mean, everybody's at home. Let's just you can do Zoom calls if we have to. You know, let's just just right. do it remotely. Um, so that's that's the kind of work that's happening, and it's not like our jobs aren't going away. And we, I, I feel like I, 
talk about this every single time I get in front of the camera. But it's it just is what it is. The technology right now is is, is allowing us to do more, more remote stuff. It allows the firms to split the file up in, into little smaller bite sized pieces so that they can have, you know, they can b- maybe better utilize the resources that they have. Right. Yep. So, speaking of of piecing the work out and 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 how they're doing it. You know, one of the things that I experienced, and I'm just going to throw this little piece of advice out in the middle of this, is that, um, yes, there's task assignments. You know, you're out there running dailies, and you'll get something that's just a scope-only claim, yeah. you know? And a task and, is just one small piece of the right, claims process. Right, And, and so um, if you accept a, a uh, you know, a daily deployment type scenario, make sure you have the discussion about scope only claims task assignments versus versus you know full claims um because you could find yourself doing a whole lot more task assignments than what you thought you were going to do yeah. um i was actually in a such and I, i'm not mad about it anything like that it made it work out but i received a lot of task only assignments scope only assignments that took up a lot of time and and um, had I known, I would have had a conversation up front. I'm not going to turn anything back. I'm not going to sit there and say, hey, look, I didn't come up here to run scope onlys. Um, I took my, I dealt with them, but then I called them and said, hey, look, I'm, I didn't drive all this way to do scope yeah. onlys. And so I didn't receive any more after that. But um, make sure you have that conversation up front. Yeah. You know, set so expectations. Yeah, set expectations. And, and, and the thing about it is, is that you got to, I think I think everybody who's an adjuster, myself included, back when I was you know hot and heavy in it, there's going to be some of that, no yeah. matter what, yeah. right? Um, it's like going to the recruiter at the Navy and you want to be a Top Gun pilot, and right. then you get into the Navy and you find yourself peeling potatoes. Right. They're going to put you wherever they want to put you, no matter what they told right. you up front. Um, and if the thing about it is, is that if you made it clear at the beginning, you're like, listen, you know, I, I'm. I prefer to get these kind of claims or whatever. Um, and, you know, you, you state what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll maybe disincentivize your manager from just piling them on you right. and saying, you know, getting, you know, asking forgiveness before permission to right. deal. Because um, they, they still have, somebody's got to do that work, right? Right. And luckily for me, whenever I switched from one area to another, I was lucky enough and I had the same field managers in both places. And when I left yeah. one area and went to another, I kept the same field managers versus sometimes you may change areas and you're getting a whole different set of managers. I kept the same people. So I had the relationship there and I was able to have a you know pretty frank conversation about it. Um, if anybody knows me, I can get a little salty at times. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why your, your name on Instagram has a Frank in it? Uh, something like that, yeah. So. Uh, Anyway, the now if I'm out in an area where I'm I'm there for a long time, you know, I mean, again, I was in New Mexico for four months. Um, it's starting to slow down. Oh yeah, send me those task assignments all day long. I will do them. Yeah. I'm I'm in an area that's easy to get to. It's you know, I can you know I never have to drive more than an hour, you know, anywhere you know, except for if I have to go way north, and then they know not to send them to me if they're they're way north. But I can sit there and knock those out, you know, on the fly. It fills in work for me. And, you know, hey, I might have had four scheduled that day. But you know what? I just, I've got like three scope onlys. Well, I can knock out four, you know, four claims and, and those three scope onlys in the same day or maybe four scope onlys and, you know, made a, had a heck of a day. I mean, I don't mind that. But it's whenever you're traveling a really long way, you know, it's, you know you're only going to be there for a couple of weeks. And, uh, and 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 don't ask me why I decided to go up to Washington. That was way too far to drive. I just did it. You know, it was one, it was one of those things. Like, well, I'm slow here. Not much going on. These days, there are a growing number of remote work opportunities for independent adjusters. With Scoper Writer programs popping up all over the place, you can do photo and scope in the field 
or you can just sit at home in your pajajays and write the estimates on what the scoper got when they were out in the field. And it doesn't matter where you live, as long as you have the internet, you can write claims as a desk adjuster, but you can't get that sweet gig without being licensed. So if you live in Nebraska, which doesn't require an adjuster to be licensed, you still have to have a New York license to write claims somebody scoped in New York, makes sense? Of all the credentials you need as an adjuster, there really is none more important than your adjuster license, especially your first one. You're gonna need it to do just about everything else, including some adjuster schools even require you to have one before they'll let you enroll. So you need Adjuster Pro. Adjuster Pro provides a comprehensive and easy to use way to get and maintain your adjuster licenses. Most importantly, Adjuster Pro was founded by independent adjusters and the team at Adjuster Pro is dedicated to helping you thrive as an adjuster with resources for every licensing state, including dead simple CE packages. Adjuster Pro is the gold standard for adjuster licensing. You'll find everything you need to get licensed in one place. Go to adjustertv.com slash adjuster pro right now. You know, hadn't been, hadn't been to Washington in a long time yeah let's go and so i went well yeah. i did uh i got called um i can't remember what year it was about 10 years ago i think um no it wasn't quite that long ago because i was i was i was married when, mm. when i went but i got called to southern california for mudslides like which they get periodically out there and by the way i've never had a california license um but um, they, I, they had me under a blanket license or a temporary license. I never asked. I never said anything. It just they gave me claims. Um, anyway, that turned into a deploy daily deployment. And my original uh, area was, and I told them where I was going to be. I was like, I need, I'm going to be staying in Glendora, you know, which is, I don't know. If you, if you, there's no traffic at all, it might be 45 minutes to the beach, right. an hour to the beach. Um, maybe. Um, with traffic, it could be all day. But so I was like, from there to um, like Temecula or like, you know, down to pushing towards San Diego. Right. And was, cool. And then I start getting claims. I got, started getting claims, claims in Santa Barbara, which is a haul from there. I mean, it's especially rush hour. Um, I got claims in Lompoc and Ventura, mm -hmm. which I did. I had one day where I did one claim driving all the way up there from Glendora and it was a nine hour one way commute. I sat in traffic for 18 hours in one day to do one claim that didn't even pay very well. And it was T and E and it was like, I was only so much of that I could handle. And so, I mean, there are those opportunities are out there. There's high turnover because it, frankly, they, those, those deployments, they suck. I mean, yep. they're not, they're not fun. Um, but you know that's one of those deals where they're asking for forgiveness instead of permission. They just started giving me yep. slab leaks, right, and condo claims, things that were, had nothing to do with. They were plumbing, you know, and they were daily vandalism, you know, that kind of stuff. It wasn't mudslide claims anymore. Yeah. So and I, I think we stayed there for three months, and then we're like, well, you know, so when I when I went to New Mexico, and I and I knew I was going to be there for a while. You know, I liked it there. Um, matter of fact, we were even considering moving there at one point. Um, you know, I just called other because I'm out there running dailies. I'm not on a deployment. I'm not exclusive. You know, I'm not getting anything, any special consideration for being there, yep. you know. So I reached out to other IA firms because I knew I was in an area that was underserved. And IA firms I've never done work with before, you know. Yeah. Hey, I'm out here. I even put a, I just threw it out on. On LinkedIn, you know, oh yeah, my, like LinkedIn makes friends with many people you can on LinkedIn, build your network up huge. I put out, hey, if you're looking for anybody in New Mexico to run claims, let me know. Based on that claim, two different IA firms called me, sent me claims, okay, uh, commercial claims, even, yeah, you know, which uh, one of them was the juiciest claim. It was so easy, it was just a water leak, and I just went out and I just scoped everything. It was just a flood cut. It was just a flood cut in like nine rooms and uh, replaced the carpet. That's all it was. And it paid really good <laughs> for a commercial claim. So commercial claims always pay good. 
and then of course I ended up doing a, a mini storage. You know, okay, that was a that was a metal building and and uh, metal fronts and everything else. So very interesting claim there because the policy does not cover cosmetic damage to the metal roof. However, there was nothing in the policy that says that they didn't pay for cosmetic damage to metal doors and metal siding. Mm -hmm. And so I took a picture of 326 doors and examined every single one of them looking for hail damage. <laughs> and I found it. <laughs> so uh, um, that one turned out, you know, took me, man, I think it took me total to scope that entire place six hours. It took me six hours to scope it. You know, yep. and uh, all of an hour to write the estimate. I'm telling you, man, commercial. <laughs> listen, this it's where it's at for me. And I did a lot of commercial in my day, and th those were the only claims that I wouldn't write up on site, yep. unless it was like a rental prop well, one house, which right. is just like doing a regular one. Um, but I would do. You get a whole, a whole bunch of buildings, right? Apartment complex, um, uh, like a. a a, what do they call it? A pedestrian shopping center, which mm -hmm. is a strip mall. Um, and spend the day out there with the contractor. Make sure that absolutely sure the contractor is there on a commercial. Um, make sure the property manager is there or knows that you're there uh, with the owner if they want to be there. Um, and then spend the get there early, six a.m. You know, yeah. packs pack a lunch and just hammer that sucker and just scope everything. Yeah. And then the next day, like on a, apartment complexes, you know, I would scope you know, 18 buildings or whatever it is, 22 buildings. And they're all like 250 square roofs and take the whole day to scope all that. Take right. get your pictures and measurements. And it's nice when they're all the same, same pattern, same building, just, mm -hmm. you know, um, but sometimes they're not like, there's like a, a big one and a couple of, there's like three or four different types, you know, styles of building. Um, and then the next day, usually you can copy and paste a lot of stuff you know, from, from estimate to estimate to estimate and then change the measurements or, put, you know, change the sketch or whatever to make it fit that particular building. Um, one of the great things about, and usually it could be done with that by lunchtime, right? Get up early right. and, and that's, you could make, my biggest payday doing that was 22 grand that I made in like with one apartment. One yeah, and yeah. it took me a day and a half to do it. Um, and that was, that was like 2007. <laughs> well, it's been a while. Um, but, uh, those claims, um, th the great thing about those is that, I mean, besides they, they pay really well, is that you're only dealing, generally speaking, with one person, mm -hmm. one, uh, one building owner. And uh, most of the time, the way those policies are written, there'll be like a, an umbrella policy for the, the, the complex, right? You know, Greystoke Winds or whatever yep. it is, Inc., LLC, yada, yada. And then every single building has its own claim and you bill full, full fee schedule for each building. Right. So, you know, depending on what the fee schedule looks like, if, if you're writing $115,000 for each building for siding and windows and screens and gutters and downspouts on a 250 square building with a roof and all that stuff, then you're getting 2.3% or 3% or right. whatever that it, that is on that building. And then you do that 20 more times in a day. Yep. I mean, it's like, it's the, it's for the experienced guys out there. Most people, I think if they've had a, a few, a couple of few years of experience, they've been given some commercial claims. Cause right. it's the, it's the, again, it goes back to like, you know, getting the task assignments, right. They'll start to be like, Oh, you know, I know James can handle this. And he throws you a couple of those. Right. Yep. Um, and then, but you can go and work for companies that that's all they do. Right. Yep. And why wouldn't you, yep. you know what I'm saying? My best, uh, my my best payday on a claim so far was a fire claim total loss that was my best one so far my f very first large loss complete total loss i mean bulldozer total loss there was nothing left and um good paycheck you know it was like walk tape total loss it's an estate <laughs> i mean this was one of those where so some states um, you know, it varies by state. If the vehicle, if the vehicle, if the home is a total loss, in other words, it's a bulldozer, it's got to be completely restructured. It's automatically policy limits. It's automatic, and so there's no sketching. 
there's no yeah you, you yeah. just you just all you're doing is you'll you'll document that it's a total loss you'll 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 do the just order a just order a, a roof sketch you know that way at least you have the diagram of the house yeah and then you'll just do a one-liner you know and a total loss and get paid actually my first my first total fire um total loss big claim was i was trying to figure it out and and uh i'm writing the claim i'm finally getting to the point where i can write it i had to meet with the owners to go over the go over the features of the house you know each room you know help them kind of rebuild it for me while we're talking about it i've spent a week on this thing i'm finally sitting down i'm writing this claim i am about three quarters of the way through rebuilding this house okay i get a phone call from the carrier hey hey james um i want to talk to you about this so where are we at on this i said well i'm i'm finishing up the the claim today he goes what are you i mean finishing up the estimate today he goes why are you writing an estimate he goes uh this is total loss it's automatically policy limits in new mexico I'm like, well, I was told I had to do this. Oh, no, don't worry about it. Just stop where you're at and send it in. We'll, we'll get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Over with. I'm like, I'm turning it in as it is. Because just turn it in. We're yeah. good. And then my next one was the, that was the, that was the, when I found out, I'll just take some photos. That's it. Different carrier, though, on that one. So um, the other thing about, about um, doing dailies is, you know, Simbility is a player now. Yeah, you know, and it's not just one big company uses ability. There's some other smaller companies using ability, and uh, you've you've got to learn it, man. And and there's a it, it's lacking in some areas, but in some areas it is the greatest thing. It's it's it, on your average roof claim, water claims, you know, you know, walls, ceilings, stuff like that. Dude, it's fast. It's really fast. Yeah. Um, I've I mean, never used it literally start to finish you know um on a simple claim i mean from the time i walk in take my photos label them do it turn it in write my write my glr and send it up we're literally talking 45 minutes you can finish it in and the only reason why you're at the property for an hour is because the the property you know you you want to give them a little bit of customer service you know you want to just walk in out the door and so you just talk to them explain the process and answer their questions yeah. then you're there for an hour you move on the next one yeah you know and, and listen then. that's 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 one of the benefits of the latest latest technology stuff that we got getting our hands on is that it gives you an opportunity to spend a little bit more time with the customer mm-hmm. to you know have to work on your bedside manner as yeah. it were um which is super duper important and i mean we talk about it all the time even if you have to deny a claim if you do it right, if you if you've laid a foundation of rapport mm-hmm. with the insured and you've you've made it clear to them that you're, you know, you're there to help them, you're not there to try and find ways to save money or to not pay them or to drag mm-hmm. the process out, all that stuff, then that being able to use something like a Matterport or like a lidar sketch or you know whatever it is, I'm now a pro at Xactimate Mobile. Excellent. I um, fly through that. Well, we should shoot a tutorial of some kind. Um, Good idea, man. When you when you use those tools, it makes you a lot faster on the technical side of things, so that you can spend a little bit more time. And there's a, there's a, I think there's a point of diminishing returns. There's only so much time you can spend standing in somebody's living room, right. talking to them. They're going to get tired of you know whatever. I thought, 10, 15, 20 minutes maybe, but you're able to like, if they have questions, answer all their questions. Right. You know, so that's uh, <laughs> reminds me of the old uh, this little guy that I had to claim. I, I I need a new roof on my on my shop back there, and, and uh, it's gonna. I've already got the bid. It's gonna cost me eleven thousand dollars for the new roof, and I just need y'all treat me right on this. I get back there, it's tarped up. I can't see anything, you know. And uh, take pictures of underneath, you know. Get on top, take some pictures. I see some, you know, some drip edge that's damaged, and and uh, said have your contractor send me whatever photos they have. They send me the photos. There's one panel. It's one roof panel that came loose during a windstorm. That's it. Okay. That's all I can write for. Right. That's all I can write. I can't replace the entire roof. I ha- that's all I can write. And uh, I get off the roof and I'm trying to just 
kind of prep the guy a little bit, you know, and tell mm-hmm. him, I said, okay, you know, certain guidelines we have to do, and, it's, and this is right now all I can see. And, and I said, just got to get the, you know, photos from your contractor, and then I'll get back with you and let you know. All right, well, come on inside. Let me give you the estimate they gave us. Okay, I'll come inside. Have a seat. You know, wife's got, like, coconut cookies or whatever it was and right. coffee. You know, have a seat. I'm like, no, I'm not going to sit down because I don't want to enjoy your hospitality, and you cuss me later when you find out you gave me cookies and you're not getting paid for a roof. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say that, you know, but that's what's the, I know I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I sit, I drive all day. I just stand up, you know, and uh, sure enough, I write, write it for one roof panel because that's all I got the picture for. Uh-huh. Turn it in. And uh, he gets a copy of the estimate before I got the approval to settle it. Oh. Okay. And so I was literally reading my email putting my stuff, getting it pulled up my computer to call him. I just want to tell you that I understand why you're an independent adjuster because if you write estimates like this all the time, no wonder you can't keep a job and ah. nobody will hire you. You know, <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? What do you mean? This is all you're going to pay me. I, said, I, got an, I need an entire roof. My roofer says I need an entire roof. I said, your, your roofer needs to feed their kids. <laughs> you know, I didn't say that, you know, but right. I was like, sir, this is, you know, this is the only damage you have was one panel, you know? And, uh, he goes, I need an entire roof. I said, sir, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, if, if, if you hit your garbage can with the right fender of your car, I said, are you going to replace the left one? That didn't make any sense. He hung up on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story, James. So I had this one. Yeah. Um, this was years and years ago. And I think I was working in, I want to say I was working in North Kansas City, uh, like Gladstone area. Um, maybe Liberty, Missouri. Um, anyway, so the property was a rental property that, um, they were going to sell. Right. So they had let the renters go and everything. And they had a hail claim because they they had, and they had hail damage on the outside of the house. But I was, I was standing on the front yard with a guy looked at the whole, you know, roof and everything. And when I was up on the roof, actually, I, uh, looked into the backyard i couldn't get into the backyard he's like there's no reason to go in the backyard and i turned around i from the roof i looked in the backyard and it was overgrown with trees where the grass should have been you Mm -hmm. know like the little sapling trees right and they were all like six eight feet high it was like a jungle back there so it was like they're they're uh and it was some big trees over the property but they had like a chain link fence right that surrounded the back the backyard and the backyard their backyard is fully saplings right. like you couldn't there was no place where there wasn't they were growing up through the deck and then the neighbors on either side had grass so it was this bizarre like anyways i'm sure there was critters and everything else living in there um but i what i got down and and uh, said yeah it looks like you got some damage to the roof and everything you know um was there damage to the inside he's like oh yeah yeah come on inside and he's like don't mind the mess go inside and their tenants that they had apparently were like i don't know they were they, they didn't take care of the place <laughs> i'll just put it that way so the walls had what it looks like it looked like they didn't have any furniture in there mm-hmm. because there was like places on the on the walls about like i don't know chest high where it looked like people were leaning up against the walls the whole time just hanging out drinking right. or whatever the, the carpet was the most disgusting carpet i've ever seen in my life it was stained stank there was food particles and big spill marks and like places where it looks like somebody knocked over their you know 44 ounce big gulp and then knocked over the ashtray into what they just spilled onto the floor and then just left it right and uh, he's like he walked me back to the uh the back bedroom a couple of back bedrooms go down the hall you know and it's just filthy dirty and they were just trying to clean it out and go back there and he's like, here's the water stains on the ceiling and took some pictures of those, got the measurements and everything and went back out. And as I was going to get into my car, it was summertime, of course, you know, and I like put my leg up to get into my truck and I noticed a little like red spot on my ankle because I wore like those little no-show socks with right. like hiking shoes. And I was like, what is that? And it disappeared. I was like, was that a flea? And pull my pant leg up I looked at my pant leg and there's little red spots all over my pants there were and it was all fleas and so I had to, like backed out of my truck as fast as I could so I wouldn't get fleas in the car right and we're standing out there like at that point it's too late right so and I'm like sweeping my pant legs off and like shaking them out and getting them off my legs and everything 
and got satisfied that I got all the fleas out of there, wrote the estimate up. It was really easy to write up and jump back out and uh, went out to the, went to the front door and knocked on the door and then I kind of backed out to the driveway and, and like it was sunny out and the sun was like behind him, like, you know, kind of mm-hmm. up there and he was here. And so he was like kind of backlit a little bit and I was trying to get away from the house and cause I didn't want to get more fleas. Right. And so I'm starting to go over the, the estimate and everything with him and I look up and I see like these, these little things flying at me, kept jumping off of him. And I was like, God, he's like, what? And I was like, can't you see these fleas? And they were like pinging everywhere. And I was like, there's fleas everywhere, dude. I just, and oh. you looked down at his shirt and they were all over his shirt. And they were like, you know, you run your, like right. brush your hand, they f- shoot away. And it, it's like they disappear because they, they hop so fast. It was the grossest thing. Oh man. Fleas. 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 Did you have a beard then? No, I don't think I could grow a beard then. Oh, okay. I barely can grow one now, I mean, let's be honest. So, uh, that's bad, man. My favorite stories are the gross ones, usually. Yeah, that's all I got. Right on. All right, well, let's wrap this sucker up. You got so, uh, yeah, you know, I've been in this, uh, you know, this colder climate for me now for a few weeks. And I finally figured out whenever I come home, the best place to sit. Where's that? In the corner. Why is that? It's 90 degrees. Oh. <laughs> I get it. it yeah, is. That's an acute joke. Oh, oh that's, a, a joke. That's, a, that's, a, that's a cute joke. <laughs> the that's joke that keeps on giving. Acute, get it? <laughs> acute angles? Yes. Okay, I'll quit explaining that one. This is Adjuster TV.